is there such a thing as hot topics and hand hygiene and and don't we know everything about hand hygiene by now and just reflecting back on all of the questions that everybody's asked and what the things that we've talked about the um, Benedetta's presentation those sorts of things it actually shows that even though there is this huge amount of research and work that's being done we really don't know everything about hand hygiene um, as yet and its role within um, infection control and interestingly as a I, as a way of looking into the impact of hand hygiene and where, and the discussions that are being had um, I did a search on the ACA list, which is our email um, within the college, infection control college, that people put out if they've got general inquiries. And just in the last year, there's been 156 hand hygiene discussions, queries, comments, um, just in the last year. So it's clearly still a hot topic um, that is important to us. So I was, I'm going to talk about three separate areas, where I'm not going to touch on much. Um, I'm then going to have a brief look at what um, overuse of gloves and some interesting things that are going on in, in, in terms of understanding hand hygiene behaviours and how they play out within clinical practice. Um, so these first, um, these first articles are all ones that Vendetta has already talked about um, and these were actually presentations that I got to see when in ICPIC this year that were very interesting. And I think it's always good to, to know, for you to know, that we do look at these things and we're always looking for ways to make sure that we're keeping up to date with the literature, making sure that we know what's going on in terms of keeping things um, efficient and effective and knowing what's going on. So this was just um, that paper referred to in terms to how to rub and using the fingertips first. This, I saw this presentation at ICPIC and it was fantastic in terms of understanding hand contamination and the role of um, hand rub in particular in, um, in looking after that. There were 16 healthcare workers involved in this study and they were looking at, as um, we've talked about, moving them around and they did find that the fingertips, um, moving that fingertips step did make a difference, a significant difference in the log reduction. Um, this is another paper that was, or a study that was published in um, clinical microbiology. Again, it's referring to the um, change in the WHO six-step technique. Um, strangely enough, and I did exactly the same thing as you, um, and, and changing that down to the three-step process, and also to the how long is long enough um, published, which did look at the range of um, time and duration of hand rubbing as a comparison, and this was 32 healthcare workers. The reason I put the, the number of healthcare workers into each of these was just to demonstrate the numbers that we're talking about. Um, and they were aiming to look at hand rubbing duration and um, the differing, and they, as we've talked about, found that there was no difference, or that, that 15 seconds was not inferior. It was an um, inferiority study. So basically, just to summarise, is that technique and efficacy obviously are an important part of compliance, but we might be able to um, perform hand hygiene more efficiently. That longer duration of rubbing does not necessarily equal greater reductions, um, and that we need to understand hand contamination better, and it seems to play an important role. But as I said, I did include the numbers in those studies because they are small participant numbers. Um, and just the role as well of the work that we do in the clinical setting and doing research in the clinical setting compared to in the laboratory setting. Um, I'm also going to talk about glove use. Glove use is a, as it um, has always been a major barrier to hand hygiene and so, so much so that we've always had a whole page dedicated to it on our web page. Um, and, and a lot of our data, a lot of our um, references on our web page date back about 10 years. So I've got two things that I want to talk about in terms of more recent literature. One of them is this um, systematic that review that was done in 2015. And basically, 10 years later, they found basically what we found, what they found 10 years ago. But they did go back and have a look at papers um, and you can see there the breakdown of how many they looked at and, and how many studies overall. But basically they found that the contamination of gloves during routine care is common. Gloves can protect the healthcare worker, but still the literature says that that protection is not complete. 
Glove use remains suboptimal. Um, gloves are often overused and used inappropriately, and inappropriate glove use can you lead to the risk of transmission. So basically everything that we knew, but I think it's always good when that sort of literature, uh, systematic review is done to look at those things again. Um, I was very lucky to go and do some work with the University of West London earlier this year, or mid this year, and um, they've actually done a significant amount of work around glove use, and I have to acknowledge Dr Jenny Wilson for these slides. She was very happy to share them with with us, um, they did a great study looking at um, inappropriate glove use, to glove or not to glove. Um, they used WHO hand hygiene guidelines in terms of what indications for gloves, which was good because it obviously is, um, in, marries up with what we look at as well. And so they were the um, indications for glove use and they used a modified um, hand, um, audit tool. And interestingly, they found that there was wide, well, and, and we could probably, if we replicate the study in Australia, we'd probably find similar widespread use of gloves for low risk activities. So really interestingly, looking at <laughs> mobilisation, um, bed making and cleaning, um, and other, another myriad things there. Um, they also found that the same gloves were being used for more than one task. So emptying of, they, this was an exact example that they saw, emptying of catheter bag, gave patient mouth care, checked patient's blood sugar, or with the one set of gloves on. I have seen someone do a similar thing, moving from um, drainage bags to doing mouth cares my, myself when I've been auditing, so I know that does happen in Australia too. Um, and they also looked at potential contaminations of susceptible sites in terms of doing um, um, central line flushes, moving between different devices and those sorts of things which we know um, happen here too. And also the same set of gloves for more than one patient. So looking after one patient, then going to another patient's chart, then going back to the first patient, then going back to their IV pump. So their key findings were that gloves were used inappropriately 57% of occasions um, and the risk of contamination occurred in 49 episodes of care when gloves were used. Hand hygiene was only performed 41% of the time and similar practices were um, amongst all types of staff. So just looking at glove use, um, glove use is still an issue for cross transmission and continues to be a barrier for us. Um, and gloves are predominantly still used to protect the wearer, but often not based on sound infection control principles. And I also think that there's a consideration here in terms of aseptic technique um, in encouraging inappropriate um, glove use. I know that there's people who have picked up particular frameworks that encourage um, glove use. An interesting thread that was on the ACA list re recently were around um, glove use for IV um, anti or IV medications giving, whether it's appropriate to use gloves or not. So those are just a consideration in terms of looking at practice. And last of all, I just want to ha um, touch on a couple of studies that have been looking at hand hygiene behaviour. Um, this actually comes from Hugo Sachs's group um, in Switzerland. But this is a great um, paper that was only released in the last few weeks in antimicrobial resistance and infection control. Um, which looks, uses um, head-mounted cameras for a period of time um, with healthcare workers and then they look at um, hand, I'll have the correct terminology here, so um, it's these um, head-mounted cameras that they look around, you can see that's a picture of how they work it out there. They had 10 healthcare workers do this, um, eight nurses and two doctors in ICU. Um, the, and the aim was to document hand to surface exposure, so looking at transmission. Um, they wore their head um, head mounted cameras and then the recordings were used to um, look through and code um, those, those um, hand to surface exposures. They found that 42% of the exposures ha um, ha happened with inside the patient zone or transmissions, um, mobile objects 33%, immobile surfaces 5% and patient intact skin 4%. But 46% of those occurred from outside of patient zone, so moving into the patient zone. Um, but they also included touching of the healthcare worker's own body. So if the healthcare worker touched themselves and then did something, um, touched the patient, that was counted as an outside of the patient zone. Um, mobile objects coming with them and immobile, immobile surfaces. Um, and they said that they noticed that 12% of the events involved critical sites on the patient. 
So it's really interesting. Um, and then just another bit of work that's been done, well, I wanted to finish on some Australian <coughs> research that's been done with video reflexive ethnography, um, where basically there's um, uh, healthcare workers have their practices videoed for them and then that's then played back to them. Um, and that's then used as a qualitative research process, if you like, um, and is also um, to support learning. Um, and they, um, so there's a group that do tend to do this, um, are doing a lot of this work. Um, and so I just wanted to touch on that as well. They've also done a bit of work um, where they've actually taken the video footage of patients talking about their experience of glove use. Um, that's the um, first paper there, um, glove use. And it's very interesting if you want to have a look at what patients' perception of glove use is as well. Um, so there's just some novel methods for studying and understanding hand hygiene practices. And it provides that contextualised view and, um, in terms of the work and the activities that we do and the risks that we have. And self-reflection, as we've talked about already, can be a very powerful tool for clinicians um, and perhaps might be another way of, of supplementing that um, monitoring of hand hygiene practices. That is it for me.